Welcome back Team Forever, back again with another video. And today I'm about to make this video that I've been trying to make for a while, but it just kept getting postponed and postponed and postponed and pushed back. But um, in case y'all don't know, I'm pretty sure most of y'all know if y'all follow me on social media. I, uh, as you can tell by the title of the video, if you didn't already know, I applied for Big Brother Season 20. Um, a lot of people in my life always told me I should be on the show, but I never really watched the show. I didn't really know what it's about. The only thing I know is that it was a reality show. So I wanted to apply for it, but mainly because other people told me I should be on it, and it's a reality show, and I like reality shows, so why not? I figure why not. So basically, I, I, I tried to apply for it a while ago, but it didn't work out. But this time, I was watching somebody else's YouTube video, First of all, this is how I heard about the casting call. Um, I was watching somebody else's YouTube video, Danielle Victor. You probably can go check it out. And her video is called I Applied for Big Brother. And I watched it, and I'm like, what? She applied for Big Brother? Like, she auditioned. Like, she cast for it. Which means she didn't just do it online. Because I'm not a fan of applying online, even for jobs. I like hard copies, going straight in, you know, doing the interview. So, it was a casting call. So, I didn't know where she was from or anything, so I wanted to check that out and figure it out and see, you know, what was up with the casting call. And I watched her video, and she said she was from L.A., and the casting call was on Sunday. And in my house, and, and where I was, it was Sunday again. So, she was from about last Sunday, and I, it was Sunday again, so... Sorry. So... I looked up the cast and call, and she basically told us how she didn't make it. She didn't make the show. She wished she did. But anyway, I looked up the cast and call, and it said, I, you know, in case y'all don't know, I live in Michigan. And on the cast and call, the next date where they was going to be was Detroit. And I was like, oh, yes, I can go to the cast and call. Perfect. So it said Detroit. I went on there, and it said in Detroit, in the city called Royal Oak, and it said from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. So, I looked at the time on my phone, and I'm like, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., it's already Sunday. I looked at it, it was 4 p.m. So, I'm like, wow, I missed the casting call. <sighs> I really wish I could have auditioned or cast it for the show, because I'm pretty sure I could make it. You know, with my, just because of my personality, not because of anything else, just because of my personality. I thought I could make it, so I was determined to go to the casting call, and I had this idea in my head. I said, let me find the closest the next closest where they're going to be and I was hoping that it was going to be in Indiana or inside Ohio turns out it was in Chicago and it was on Thursday now mind you it's Sunday it's four o'clock on Sunday I have to get there on Thursday and I worked on Thursday so I knew I couldn't really make it but I was just so determined and people kept on telling me that I should do it so on Sunday, I asked my aunt, I was like, can you take me on a trip to Chicago? You know, we're in Michigan, it's not that far away. And she was like, boy, no. And I'm like, you know, I expected everybody to say no, so I wasn't hurt or nothing. But then I started convincing her with stuff. I'm like, well, the winner of this show wins $500,000. Because that's something else I knew about the show. The winner wins $500,000. I also know that you're gone for 100 days. But other than that, I had no clue about the show. So... I told them, I told my aunt, and I started convincing her a little bit, and she's like, yeah, we can go, you know, um, but I don't want to drive. I don't want to drive the whole way, and you can drive. And I'm like, that's, like, the main thing I don't want to do. If I wanted to drive, I could just go there myself. Um, in case anybody that knows me knows I don't like driving, so, you know, she, but she didn't really say no. So then I asked my grandma, and she was like, no, but you can take the train. I'll take the train with you. And I'm like, um, so again, she didn't really say no. She just, she worked that day too, so there was no way she could actually drive me there. She said a round trip on a, on a train. Long story short, before me asking all these people, I, Oh, well, I'm going to tell you, I asked my aunt, and my aunt was like, when do you need to go? I said, Thursday. She said, oh, that's funny. I'm taking a trip to Chicago on Thursday. She was going with her husband, my uncle, and they were going to go see his dad, who lives in Chicago still. So, all that, whoop de whoop de -whoop. long story short, their, their, their trip got canceled because of something. He couldn't get Friday off. He could only get Wednesday and Thursday, so they didn't go. I asked my cousin. She said yes, so we went on a trip to Chicago on Thursday. I had to find somebody to replace my shift for work. I went to Chicago. Uh, Chicago's thing was from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. So I get there to Chicago and I get to the line and this line was... Oh, actually, I got something to show y'all.
So I get there and this line is wrapped around the building. When I watched Danielle's video, she talked about how she didn't expect the line to be so long and how many people was in it. She said she was like number 300 and something out of like 300 or something, something like that. But basically, I thought personally that since she was in LA, more people would go out for the show. You know what I'm saying? Chicago is not LA. Michigan is not LA. And I know Chicago is just a city, but like Illinois itself is not California and neither is Michigan. It's not California. So I just assumed that it was probably very, very crowded there because it's LA. It's California. You know, a lot of people who live in California want to be on TV. So that's what I was thinking. So when I got there, it was like 6 30. I went. And this line was wrapped around, and I was number 213. No, I was number 212. Now, I had my sister with me, and she got one of these. She's not old enough to be on the show, but she got one, and she had it in her room, so I just got it. Uh, number 214 she had, so but I was number 212. I don't know what number they were on, but when I tell you that I was inside this line, freezing cold in Chicago, I had nothing on but a hoodie, and it was, you, you know what a hoodie is, it was real thin. I didn't. I had on a hat, but it wasn't like a real good hat. Um, freezing, literally freezing, literally pissed because of how cold I was out there and waiting in line. And like I told y'all, I never seen the show. I talked to my friend Nadia. Y'all know her. Shout out to her from her videos, and she was telling me about the show. No, actually, she didn't tell me about the show, but because I didn't want her to. She's like, "Oh well, you're applying. I love that show because I was looking for somebody to watch the show." And she watched the show. She said she wanted to go in there with her brother. I mean, with her sister. I'm talking fast because I don't want this video to be too long. And I know that if if I go into details like I am and I'm really talking to y'all, it's going to be like 30 minutes long. And it might still be 30 minutes long. I just don't want it to be. But anyway, so I got to the place. And the reason why I told Nadia I don't want you to tell me anything about the show because I wanted to go in not knowing a thing. I wanted them to know that I've never seen the show. I wanted to stand out. And I know people in my family, when I was telling them about it, they was like, what's the show about? And I said, I don't know. I want to go to the Chasm Call and not know nothing about the show because I feel like I will stand out. It'll make me unique. It'll make them remember me that I've never seen the show and I don't know anything about it. I'm going in there with, you know, expecting anything, you know? So when I finally got there, when I finally got inside this bar, because it was at a bar and, you know, Big Brother, um, when I finally got in there, Mind you, I got outside. It was, I think, 37 degrees, 36 degrees outside. And I was standing out there in a hoodie and my sister was standing out there. We were out there from 6.33 all the way to 10.33. I don't know if it was exactly 10.33, but we was going to say it was 10.33 because it sounds better. But I know it was like, it was near 11. It was about around 11 when I got in there. I finally got in there. And they took... So, I don't know why it took so long. Because I'm number 212. I'm number 212. They took 10 people at a time. But I don't think they were taking 10 people at a time in the beginning. I think they were taking like 6 people at a time. And they spent, they said we spent about 10 minutes in the casting call. So, I'm, I, like, it feel like it should have went by a little bit quicker. But maybe my math is wrong. I don't know. But anyway. Actually, my math probably is wrong. But anyway. So, I get in there. And there was two people that we went to. Oh, actually, let me tell y'all about the line, the people that I met in the line, because I was from Michigan. I never seen the show. A lot of people were talking about the show and I never seen it. So I didn't really, you know, listen, you know, stuff like that. But people were really nice in Chicago, like talking, you know, meeting people and stuff. Um, but there was this one girl who said she drove here from St. Louis. And she talked about how long the drive was and how she drove by herself. She just wanted to do the cast call and all this. And the people were like, oh, oh, you better say that in there and stuff like that. And I'm just sitting there like, I'm not going to tell them nothing right now. Because, like, I'm from Michigan. I drove here as well. But she just said it, so I'm going to let her have that. But eventually this guy, and by the way, I hope somebody makes the show that I met that that was with me in my group or that I even seen out there. But there was this guy, he had dreads, he was black, he had dreads. By the way, when I first got in the line, majority of people were white, and that's not a bad thing or nothing like that. But I was just thinking, like, what type of show is this? Because, like I said, I've never seen the show. So, <laughs> majority of them were white. A lot of the guys, the boys, were gay. That's just the truth. I'm not saying nothing bad about that. Um, that's just 
the, how it was in the line. I'm just being honest. So, but there was some straight guys inside the line too. But um, where was I going? Oh, there was this black guy with dreads, and he had an accent from like. To me, it sounded like an England accent, like he was from England. And, like, I wasn't going to ask him where he was from, but somebody else, or where the accent came from. Because when I asked him where he was from, he said Chicago. Well, I said, are you from here in Chicago? And he said, yeah. And I told him I live in Michigan. I didn't, you know. And he said, get some pizza. Get some pizza. You know, he told me and my sister. He asked my sister first. And he was talking to us. You from Michigan? You live in Michigan, too. Get some pizza. Stuff like that. My accent is bad, but that's just how he was. He was cool. Um, when we were waiting inside the line, a lot of people went in the bar just to buy drinks, but they just, to be honest, we, they just sat there because they didn't want to be outside and waited for their number to be called. Um, somebody else I met inside the line was these YouTubers. Um, I will shout them out, but I don't have it queued up on my phone. I don't feel like looking for them, but they were twins, boys. Um, and they were... By, uh, Okay, so they probably gonna see this video because they did add me on Snapchat or subscribe to me on Snapchat. But one of them had on these shorts, but I'm pretty sure they were just underwear. Like they were so far up and they they looked like underwear, just boxer underwear. The other one was dressed up all nice and he had um his backpack on with his camera sticking out. So when they were just like the life of the line and being so loud and extra and stuff they said we're youtubers and i said oh okay so they were talking to other people and there was this old old lady and the one that had on the the underwear he was one of the gay guys inside line i'm assuming and he said um to the old lady he said can you give me a kiss and he stuck his lips out like <laughs> but she gave him a kiss on the lips to everybody and like oh crazy like what he just kissed her and he literally was kissing everybody on the lips that would let him pretty much some people didn't and thought he was weird, like I did. And some people were just kissing him right on the lips. And I just thought it was gross when people would kiss him because, of, like, he just kissed this person and that person and that person. But his brother wasn't like that. His brother was more cool and just, like, well, he, was, he was still loud and stuff, but he was more cool. Sorry if y'all see this, but y'all were weird inside the line. Um, my sister, he said one at, at one point inside the line because they were right behind us. He was like, my sister was loving them, smiling, laughing and stuff. I didn't really care about them. They were so loud. And he was like, I'm bored. And he looked over slowly at my sister. And he went like, like to get a kiss. And she just was laughing, you know, still looking straight, you know, smiling and stuff. And he would just keep getting closer and closer, like, you know. And then she's like, she went like this. And once she went like that, he, he was like, oh, okay. And he stopped. And then, um, eventually, like, 60 seconds later, he was like, oh, I'm bored. And he went like that to me. The same exact, you know, thing he did to her. And I'm just like, you know, same thing she did, basically, except I wasn't laughing and smiling like she was. And he was like, oh, okay. You know, same thing. Weirdos when I tell you. Also, we at one point in Chicago, there was this girl who had already got cast. And she said she'd been there since I'm trying to figure out how she's been there since 4 if it started at 6. See, that makes it even worse because that means they started taking people before 6. And why, would I, why was I out there till 11? But she was drunk. As, she was so lit. She was drunk. And she she kissed the guy. The guy that um, was kissing everybody, the YouTuber. And, you know, she was going crazy, yelling. She's like, once you go in there, all you're going to do is get interviewed. They talk to you for like 10 seconds. And that's it. So, you know, just have fun, go do that. Like, she was drunk. She was, I would wish she would move and get out of my face. She wasn't really in my face, but she was on the sidewalk just yelling at people. I told you about the old lady grandma. She went inside the bar and she was acting crazy, you know, taking people's hats off, dancing and stuff. Um, so I, I, I'm like, what type of show is this? Like, it was so many different, like, people, like these crazy, crazy people inside the line. I'm just like, am I just too. Because I thought my personality was good for TV, but I'm like, am I just, like, not weird enough for this show? I was confused. But, um, trying to think someone else I saw on the line. Um, there were some normal people. <laughs> but, I mean, they didn't stand out. But I hope, hope one of them make the show. Um, but anyway, so once I get in there, um... I, like I said, they took about 10 of us and we talked to two different people. The first guy had us sitting on a chair 
on these chairs. The second guy we moved on to, he was sitting in a chair and we all stood up around the table. So this is how it went. Finally here, and I don't know what, like I'm at 16 minutes. All right, I'm gonna have to edit some of this stuff out. But anyway, so I get in there, I'm really excited. It's 11 o'clock at night. I'm in there, we're sitting in our chairs, like director chairs, and we had to hold our numbers up like this. And he took a picture of us. This is the first guy, mind you. He took a picture of us so he could remember it was in his phone. Um, he was a casting director or whatever, so or a scout, whatever he was, his title was. He told me because I asked him. But so the first thing he said, the very first thing he said was, all these friends, he was really nice too, really you know, he seemed like a good casting director. He's like, all you fans of the show? Yeah, yeah. And everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was in there with like 10 people. So it was kind of intimidating. At one point, I started to rethink what I was here for. And I'm like, so many people watch the show. And he seems like he wants us to watch the show. But I'm like, you know what? I came all the way out here with this strategy. I'm going to stick to it. Everybody's saying they watch the show. I'm like, no. So I raised my hand. I'm like, no. Never seen it. He's like, oh, you haven't? And I said, no. He said, oh, okay, that's cool, fine. You know, he was really cool about it. He was like, oh, that's cool, but do you get the just the gist of it? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, right, so you'll be gone for 100 days. You do challenges. That's one thing I didn't know. You do challenges inside the house of the reality show. Um, you get eliminated week by week. Um, you win 500000 Second place wins 50000 and third place wins 25000 but third place is not who lasts in the house the longest, but it's who the America votes as their fan favorite. And I know for a fact I will win the 25000 If If I don't win anything, I'm going to be America's favorite. I know that. <laughs> anyway, so he told me that, and he was really cool. He was asking us stuff, and he used me as an example, so I feel like I stood out like I wanted to because he said, what's your name? He didn't ask nobody for their name. I said, I'm Lorenzo. He said, what's your name? And it seemed like he just picked a random ass girl. And he said, what's your name? And I forget her name. She didn't really matter. But he said, okay, so when you're with me, I want you guys to be yourselves. You talk, you know, tell me the real. It's on this paper on this side. It has all your information. So when, But once you go over there to the other guy, you can be literally whoever you want for this show. You can lie. You can make up whatever you want. Be whoever you want. And he used us as an example because he said, what's your name? I said, Lorenzo, what's your name? Let's just say her name was Angie. He said, Angie. Le no. Yeah, Angie. Let's say you go over there and you make up what you are. Let's say that you say, hey, I'm Angie. I'm from L.A. I'm a teacher. You know, um, no. I'm from LA, I'm a, a basketball player, like an athlete, something like that. And Lorenzo's over there with you, and he hears what you're saying. And y'all both make it to the house, to the big brother house. He can use that against you, that you're, you know, an athlete. So you, so you don't want to be, tell the truth over there. You want to lie over there and say, you know, I'm, you know, something, something, something. So once you're in the house, if you say, oh, I'm Angie, I'm this, this, that, and this, and you're actually telling the truth, Lorenzo's inside the house, and he can tell people in the house, oh, no, she's lying. She, I also remember her from the casting call. She's actually this, this, that, and this. And she, he said, and then the whole house will probably vote Lorenzo out because he lied, he snitched on her. And then he said, oh, no, I'm just kidding. You know, everybody laughed. It was just a joke. So basically he was saying that we're ourselves right here, but we didn't really give out any information. We were just talking to him. And when we go to the other guy, we literally could make up whoever we want. We could be whoever we wanted to be. So I didn't have to be Lorenzo from Michigan. I could say, my name is Josh from Florida. And I am I can make up my job and all that stuff. When he said that, I thought about different things that I would say. I, the main thing I thought about saying was that I was from Arizona. I don't know why I, I wanted to, I forget what was going through my mind at that time, but I said, I'm going to be from Arizona and I'm going to be, oh, oh, that's what it was. I was going to say I'm from Arizona and I never traveled from Arizona because it's really hot in Arizona. So being here in Chicago and freezing, I wanted to make something from that. Like I was number 214, 212 out here and I was freezing, you know, stuff like that. That's what I wanted to do. Because in Michigan, it's cold all the time. So, I mean, but anyway, so 
After that, I think that guy liked me a lot. He was cool, and I thought, this is going good. I get over to the other side, and I said, you know what? It went so well with the first guy. I'm about to literally just be myself with the second guy. I'm being myself. I don't care. I'm in. This guy, I kind of could tell, was in kind of a little bit of a bad mood. I kind of could because he said um, he was sitting back in his chair, you know, and we were all standing up, and he's like, he could tell we were excited, obviously. And he's like, um... Listen, guys, so I'm going to try to speed this one up because we're running, you know, short on time. And you never want to hear that with anything that they're about to rush through what you're about to do. Um, so he was like, um, I promise you I will get a sense of who you are with the little bit of time that I'm going to spend with you. And I'm just like, okay. And I'm pretty sure everybody felt that way. And he went around the table and we all had like a little, like one, 60 seconds to talk and tell about ourselves. People in there, I think that some of I can't tell if any of them were lying. But the first guy that talked sounded so boring. And he's like, he was like, I'm from Target. I'm a manager at Target. You know, this, that. You know, I don't, you know, I don't have sex. I haven't had sex in like three years. Somebody inside the group like yelled out at him. Oh, you're lying. You're fucking lying. You're a manager at Target. You're having sex with the cashier. I'm like, these people is crazy. But the guy from Target, I could tell was being himself because he... He grabbed out his thing from Target's bag. He said, yeah, I got off work and I came here. And I feel like out of everybody in my group, he could make it. I really do. Well, not out of everybody because it's one person I think is going to make it. And I'm going to tell that about that person in a second. But he he seemed really genuine. And like he was being himself, telling 100% the truth. So I can see him making it on the show. Um, And uh, there is... Not many people stood out. Three people stood out. I'm going to tell you who they are. So the next person was this girl standing right next to me. She wasn't next after him, but there was a couple more people, and then it was him. Actually, I'm going to tell you about this one girl. She was real small, like a lady, and she said, I'm not just such and such with fake tits. And I looked at her, and I looked at her boobs, and they look, they didn't look good at all. So I'm like, whatever. <laughs> but anyway, so this um girl standing next to me, she was, um I think she was from Michigan, I, I, I think. But I do think she's going to make it. And here's why. And with everybody that he talked to that was describing himself, he always cut them off and said, are you single? Like, that's always what he said. Like, are you single, married? And Like, he always did that. So this girl next to me, she was talking. And she was being genuinely herself, too. She seemed like she was not shy. Well, she was shy, but she was just talking, you know, being herself. And he said, are you single? And she said, yeah, I'm single. I, um, I've been single for, like, and I forget how much she said and stuff. And he said, um, okay, so what former house guest could I bring back into the house to make you, um, that you could hook up with? And she was like, oh, my God. Like she was blushing and stuff all the time. And she said, Josh, this is so embarrassing. I'm blushing. You know, she said all that. And I honestly think she's going to make the show. I honestly do. Because he asked her, like, he, she gave an answer like that. Like, it seemed like he was interested in her. I feel like she's going to stand out. So then when it got to me, I'm describing myself, you know, I, and I told the 100% truth. I'm like, yeah, I'm a YouTube personality. I'm from Michigan. I live in Michigan. I got a broadcast diploma, and I'm back in school again for this. You know, he cut me off. He's like, "Are you single?" I'm like, "I'm not in a relationship." And he said, um, "Who's your favorite former house guest?" And I said, "Oh, um, I don't watch the show." And he's like, "Oh," and I'm like, "Yeah." And uh, he just went on with his. I went on with what I was saying, and then he said at the end, he was like, "Oh, okay." So um. And this is why I think I didn't make the show, because it obviously this happened on Sunday and another Sunday. No, this happened on Thursday, and another Thursday has passed, and now it's about to be Thursday again. So clearly I didn't make the show. So this is why I think I didn't, because he said um, after I finished, he said, "Oh, okay, well thanks for coming out," because I told him how I've traveled and stuff. He said, "Oh, okay, cool. Well, thanks for coming out, but um, if you make the show, maybe you should start watching it." And then like he wrote, "Is that like, you know?" So I, I think he was offended that I don't watch the show. So I, <laughs> my plan, my master plan to not watch the show and not know nothing about it literally just phew, it blew up in my face from that guy. But I thought maybe he was acting. Maybe, you know, I did make it, but it didn't. And I keep getting calls from 
312 area code in Chicago and there's always some random person I'm thinking of is getting a call from them. That uh, big brother. But there was also another girl that's oh the man next to me was old uh, like he was really old and he was he was a nice guy he talked about how uh, even though I'm old you know if you watch the show you know old people still bring the drama you know he was talking about uh, another girl that stood out was this girl who I hope she was acting I literally I seriously hope she was acting because the stuff she was saying she's like I'm from here in Chicago and I'm I'm sleeping with someone's husband and I may or may not have been in a couple videos. In Chicago and like I'm like what the heck and she said um oh but she was talking about that stuff and I'm like she's putting on a lot I don't think she's gonna make the show cuz I think she's lying I hope she's lying and the guy talking the guy that was the casting director said so you're really vanilla and very boring basically so in my head what I'm thinking is he knew she was lying and he's like so you made up this whole you know thing because you're very vanilla and boring that's what she's because she didn't look like all this stuff she was saying and she was like no 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 no. I look like it but I'm not that and he's like no where you're talking and you sound like that and I'm like wow basically that was it after the whole thing he told us to keep our numbers on the table flat and leave because that's how he's gonna you know determine you know and I feel like he was going to give it to the girl standing next to me. I hope she makes it. She was cool. She wasn't. It was nothing wrong with her. Um, and I feel like he asked her about, you know, who can I bring into the house to see if that guy was already coming into the house. Was already coming into the house, you know. And that's how that went. Um, There's nothing else that I really can do. So, yeah, I didn't make the show. Um, But now I've been binge watching the show. I watched season 18. Oh my god, I didn't know it was so many dang episodes of this show. This show was very popular and I knew it be I know it because we were casting for Big 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 Brother 20, BB20. So I'm like if they've been on the air for 20 seasons and I heard that it's been 16 years, no, 18 years. Oh my god, they almost at 20 years, 20 seasons. I thought it was every summer, so I heard they at season 20. I don't know. I'm like I said I'm not a fan of the show. I am a fan of the show now. I watched season 18. I loved it. Um, really upset Josh or Paul didn't win in season 18, but I see that the girl from Michigan won, so I mean, I really like her that much. Um, now I'm watching season 16. That's my friend Nadia's favorite season. I'm almost done with it. I'm pulling for Beast Mode Cowboy to win. Hopefully he wins. Um, I have a feeling that the cop won. That's just my feeling because when I was watching 18, they said who the winner of season 16 was. They brought him on to talk, and I hurried up and skipped forward so I wouldn't hear it. But I remember seeing like this face. So, but that's what happened. Um, yeah, I can't wait till next year when I can go and audition again. I'm gonna audition right there in Royal Oak. Hopefully they come back or cast for the show. Audition is when you're trying to be on a in a play or on a TV show where you want to act. This is a reality show, so we're just doing a casting call, right? I don't know the difference, but, you know. That's how we went. Uh, I would love to be on the show after seeing it now. Um, it's some physical. Yeah, so the camera died, so I need to hurry up and end this. But that's everything I had to tell. Um, there we go. So, wish me luck um, for next year. I'm going to try out again and hopefully get on the show. That's about it. Um, casting call, the casting, the casting, what is it called? A tour is almost over. They got one more stop left. It's in somewhere that I don't even know. It's on April 16th. So if you want to try out for this show, you can fly out to that place April 16th. So you got a little bit of time. And um, good luck to you. And like I said, I hope somebody from that I met there makes it on the show the old guy that was standing next to me by the way afterwards he said can i get a group picture with all of you in my group because he wasn't even in the picture it was all of us and he took a picture you know and he said i hope one of y'all make the show if y'all do y'all are going to be my favorite cast member so you know but that's about it guys um be sure to leave a like comment subscribe share and share the video all four social media um catch you later